Thank you so much, and hello everyone. Yes, I am Musical Daredevil, and this is The Elder Scrolls III Morrowind. This is a game and category that was actually ran at Mag West last year, and so now for Super Magfest, we are bringing this back to the East Coast. So I'm just going to start here with the character. Time has not started yet. <sighs> this is Geob. Um, we are not going to gonna see Geob until a Skyrim DLC, believe it or not, tomorrow. Dragonborn. I'm sure the... We are going to step off the boat momentarily. Quiet. As soon as a dialogue box goes you away, we will start the timer. Start the timer in three, two, one. And right off the bat, we have what is probably the hardest strat in the entire run, and I got it. That is known as guard skip. It saves about a second to a second and a half. We now have hatch skip, where I get the skip tutorial dialogue box. Didn't get that, this is but that's fine. Now we have character generation. We finally I'm going to be picking Redguard for my character's race. The reason why is because they get an ability known as Adrenaline Rush, which is going to be super useful Great. for a jump that's coming up They're in a couple right of minutes. Pull me up to the office. Lease. And then inside we have the rest of character generation. We're going to meet a character named Socutius Urgala, who is yes, voiced by Wes Johnson, who is actually a guest You'll here have at Super Manifest, and has an autograph session in about 50 minutes if y'all want to check it out. Yes. So I do need to create a custom character. The reason why is because we need to be level three for a quest that's coming up in a little bit. See, did you mention you were born I'm under a certain birth sign. sign? Because that makes us go fast, when and going fast is great for speed runs, as you probably guessed. Interesting. Now we have a little bit of an AI expert Stamp coming up. Papers, I'm sure going to steal a platter. Correct. And because I'm in the tutorial, the game's like, "Hey, don't do that," but it's okay. But I'm going to drop the platter on the floor, and so this guard's going to try and take it from me, but because it's on the floor, he can't do that. So I can Continue just pick it up again and sell it for some gold later. Inside this barrel, we are going to pick up a ring. You are supposed to give that ring to an NPC outside. We're not going to do that. We're going to sell it for gold. There's the NPC. Bye, Fargo. Fetcher. This is a real. We are going to be buying a few things from Aril and selling a platter, a couple lockpicks, as well as some door opening scrolls. If I can click on those, there we go. There are several different kinds of teleportation in Morrowind. There is Mark and Recall, where you can mark a spot and recall there later. Then there is Alms and Divine Intervention, which teleports you to forts and temples. We will be using all of those throughout this run. In the meantime, we are heading out to a little bit of an Easter egg. There's a mage named Tarheel who invented some scrolls that allow you to jump really high. <laughs> Unfortunately, he doesn't know how to use some proper tools to gonna fall to his death. We are now going to teleport to the town of Balmora, and from here we are going to jump to the end of the game. Morrowind is very much an open world game, and you can just jump to the end of the game right from the start, like I've done. That is very much intentional. You can free you're free to roam pretty much the entire world. We are now at the dungeon Odrasol, and in Odrasol, we're going to pick up one of two items I need to beat the game. I'm going to grab the Dagger King from in here, and I'm going to scroll back and forth really, really quickly. And if you look in the top left corner, you will see my stats are going up really, really fast. In the 1.0 version of the game, that is actually permanent. Now I am parkouring around Red Mountain, we like to call it parkour in the Elder Scrolls community, heading to the second dungeon with the second item we need, that is the Hammer Thunder. One thing you'll notice is that one of the stats that went up is my speed stat, and the other one is my agility. All of these are going to be very important throughout the run. I just phase through the door there. You can do that when you have to do in this game. Those physics don't matter. Some do, though. Gonna pick up that. Gonna grind up my stats just a little bit more. There we go. Gonna quick save, and now I'm actually going to exit the game. And what I'm doing in the background, you might kind of be able to see this. Uh, let me see. I need a new window here. Is I'm going to take my game save, and I'm actually going to move it over to Game of the Year Edition. <laughs> yes, I do actually swap versions in this game. And believe it or not, it is actually faster to do this. The reason why is because there are a number of UI changes they made in Game of the Year Edition. It's also a bit more stable in general, as you might have imagined. There's four in our script. That's an error message I get sometimes. It's completely random when it shows up. Now that we've done that, I can head out of Vemidal, which is 
is actually one of the worst dungeons in the game for any percent, which is coming up later. Now we're going to head to the town of Caldera and meet everyone's favorite merchant if you play this game casually, and that is Creeper. What we're going to do with Creeper is we're going to sell him some armor I'm going to steal from this crate right here. I didn't sell all the armor to Creeper because Creeper only has 5,000 gold. So instead, I'm going to sell the remainder of the armor as well as Fargo's ring to Varik Jemaine, who's right here. I'm going to buy an amulet of teleportation, some arrows, and a bow. We are going to be using the bow and arrows frequently throughout this run, mostly for murder. Now I'm heading back to Balmora, where we jumped to the end of the game from, in order to create a couple of spells and buy some other ones. First one is on to the intervention. Head over here to this NPC. Buy a couple other spells. And now I am buying a very useful spell. This spell does several things. It increases my speed. Actually, it does increase my speed. It increases the speed of any NPC I cast it near. It increases my personality, so NPCs like me more. And then I also do this little thing where I have a duration of zero. And that actually glitches the spell so it becomes permanent when I cast it. That's known as the Soul Trap glitch. It's fairly well known if you played this game a lot casually and looked it up. So now we are going to head back to the town of Sedanin, where we started at the very beginning of the game, because there is actually an Just item in a dungeon nearby that we need to grab for the main quest. We make a special. It is in here. The vision in here can get kind of strange, um, but hopefully I can pick this up. There it is. Beautiful. Now we're going to Whoa. talk to Caius Kossads. Caius Kossads is going to be our main quest giver the first part of the main quest. There he is. He's going to give us our first orders. Our first orders are to talk to an NPC and get some information about something known as the Sixth House. The Sixth House are kind of the main villains of this game. But before we have to go fetch an item for him. That item is in this dungeon right outside of town. Now back to Balmora, and we can give the item to the NPC. Would this be a good time for a donation? I'm sure. Weapon donates a $25 saying, Morrowind is great, Musical Daredevil is great, Magfest is great. Thank you so much, Weapon, for that donation. So now what I'm doing is I'm setting up that level up that I mentioned during character generation to go to level 3. I'm not actually leveling up just yet. That will come in a little bit. I actually don't need to do that. 35 is fine. Where is the door? There it is. Doors are like the number one enemy in the speedrun. They are really difficult to handle. You'll see some very tricky doors coming up later on. So I'm heading to the Mages Guild. Going to talk to Galbradir. Going to sell off a couple of my amulets, buy this soul gem, as well as the Scrolls of Divine Intervention. Then I'm going to talk to this NPC down here who wants the skull that we got. A sincere welcome to now I'm going to buy a Levitate spell. You may have noticed I got a Levitate Amulet. This is just a little bit safer and a little bit easier to manage. And now we're going to head to Aldrun. And in Aldrun, we are going to set up for another glitch. If you cast Command Humanoid twice on NPC, which is a follow spell, and the NPC has an escort quest, it actually gets to a part of the script for that escort quest that instantly passes the escort quest. We don't know why exactly the scripts have that in there. We think it might have been a failsafe or something. Um, but it's super useful for an escort quest that's actually coming up fairly soon. Now I'm actually going to level up. And now we're going to head to the city of Vivek. Why? Actually, what? I want to check something. Okay, good. I just wanted to make absolutely sure I did that quest. Because otherwise, weird things can happen. Why? So this is the city of Vivek, and we are going to talk to an NPC here. Normally you're supposed to escort that NPC out of the club that they are in, and I went to the wrong hallway. There we go. But with our shoes of Instapass, we can just talk to them and get the information we need right away. We have another NPC over here. They are in a little bit of trouble with the tax man, but if you just kill the tax man, then that makes the problem go away. Now we'll give us the information we need. Let's see. Oh, I don't think he was dead yet. Okay. 
So that's, this is a thing that can happen sometimes. If you don't watch an NPC's an enti entire death animation, then... Let's see. Let's cast Levitate here. And if, you don't ca if you don't watch an NPC's an entire death animation, then the game doesn't actually count them as dead. Very strange. Um, that can actually happen from time to time. Let's see if they will talk to us now. Okay, did I actually get the quest? This is interesting. I'm gonna actually just load a save here, just make sure. Okay, to Vivek. There we go. I have occasionally had quests bug out on me. That is a thing that can also happen. Unfortunately, it happened during a marathon, but you know. Marathon luck, I guess. Get to instantly pass this quest again. Three blessed. Now let's see if this works this time. He is definitely gone now. His animation definitely completed. And there we go. That's the dialogue I was looking for. All right, so now we have a third NPC we need to talk to to get some information. This NPC is in, in the library. They're going to tell us to get a book, which just so happens to also be in the library. And if I can jam my head in the ceiling just enough, no one is going to catch me. They did, but it just so happens that I am you way too fast for them. The right jazz. So I can just get out of here. Not going to catch me. All right. So next we need to talk to yet another NPC and get some more information. You may have been sensing a trend here with these early quests. What? This NPC is going to tell us about something known as the Ashlanders, who are a nomadic tribe that lives all the way out in, well, the Ashlands. We're specifically going to ask about their gift-giving customs. And now that we have done all this, Kaius is finally going to tell us what exactly is going on. See, it turns out that the Emperor, who is played by Patrick Stewart in Oblivion, believes that we may be the reincarnation of a war general from about a thousand years ago. And if that is the case, we actually have a very important destiny to fulfill. So we're going to head out to the Ashlands, talk to the Ashlanders there, and see if we can get some insight on this prophecy and how exactly we are supposed to fulfill it. First, they're going to make us fetch an item in this cave here. So we're just going to go grab that now while we're on our way there. Now, I do need to be careful here. There is a chance I can get diseased from this ghost, and if that happens, it will actually mess up some dialogue. Looks like I am good. So I can go talk to the Ashlanders. First, we have some very important niceties to observe, primarily bribing this NPC 200 gold so they let us talk to the leader. Now, we can talk to the leader. We can tell him we got the bow already. He's like, great, you can talk to the wise woman now. And the wise woman, Nabadi Mesa, is going to tell us a bit more about the prophecy. So, come on. Okay, there we go. So what she says is that while we haven't quite fulfilled the requirements of the prophecy yet, we do have the potential to get there. Now, what would happen next is you would have a very long series of dungeon delving quests in order to find the location of a cave. But because I'm a speedrunner, I already know exactly where that cave is. It is right here. Oh. Inside this cave is a ring. This ring was actually worn by the war general we are the reincarnation of. Spoiler alert, yes, we are the Nerevarine, who is um, that war general. Now, what that did was it actually set up the rest of the main quest. We need to have all three of the great houses on Vardenfell name us Hortator, and all four of the Ashlander tribes name us Nerevarine. That vampire I just killed there was part of the Nerevarine quest. I'm going to turn that in now. And what the head of this tribe says is, great, you killed the vampire, but you're not done yet. Please find me a wife. <laughs> we, will, we will be taking care of that later. In the meantime, we're going to head to one of the crashier areas of the game in order to take care of the Telvanni Hortator quest. In order to be named Hortator, you need to be unanimously voted on by all members of the house. But if you kill one of the voting members, then their vote doesn't actually count. This FPC is never going to vote for me anyway, so that's fine. Now we're going to take care of the Akamusa Nerevarine quest. This would normally be a very annoying escort quest, but with our shoes of Instapass, we can just take care of this right now. 
Back to the Urshulaku camp. We're already friends with them, and this is actually not the Urshulaku camp, but that's okay. They're, like, over here. Back at the Urshulaku camp. We're already friends with them, so... They will name us Nerevari, no problem. Now we're going to head to the city of Aldrun, and we are going to take care of the Redoran Hortator quest. This is one of the more annoying quests in the game, primarily because of its RNG. This is the one and only escort quest we cannot skip due to the way this one is scripted. It doesn't quite have that little Instapass bit in there. Now, the way that the Redoran near uh, Hortator quest works is that this NPC is the son of one of the counselors who's been kidnapped. So we're going to rescue him, and once we've done that, all the other counselors are going to vote for us except the person who kidnapped him. This right here has a lot of potential to go wrong. Yeah, it's, these running animations are great when you have this much speed. Okay, where are you going? There you are. He can get lost fairly frequently, and that guard might be a problem. Looks like we're okay, though. Yep, there we go. Alright, not super ideal, but still pretty good. So now that we've done that, we have to go visit all the other counselors in order to get them to vote for us. And since this is all basically just navigation, this would be a great time for some donations if you got them. Currently, we do not have any new donations, but we are still accepting donations. Once again, that's exclamation mark donate in the chat or the QR code if you are here. We are MAGFest. We are raising money for Child's Play Charity. Oh, this year, our goal you. is $5,000, and we are already halfway uh, past the halfway point uh, for that donation mark, which is uh, $3,433.63 nice. is what we are currently at. Uh, yeah, so very good. Thank you, everyone you who's donated so far. Fortune, and, uh, yeah, thank you. All right. This is actually the last counselor in here, also the hardest matter to navigate. I got lost in here a lot, and I'm sure you did too if you played this game casually. Come on, there we go. What a nun. So now that we've done that, we can talk to the final counselor. He is going to challenge us to a duel to the death to be named Hortator. Not sure that's a great idea, but we'll see what happens. Now that we've done that, we have a little bit of a side quest back in Balmora. See, Caius and his Blades agents, yes, those Blades, have found the base, a base of the Sixth House near Balmora, and so they want us to go in there and clear it out, primarily by taking care of the head priest that is in that dungeon. Just going to head out to the coast here. And this is Aluni B, the Sixth House base. The leader of the Sixth House is someone named Dagoth Ur. We will actually be meeting up with Dagoth Ur later. In the meantime, I'm going to take care of the priest here. From out of bounds. And now, normally I would just head back to Balmora, but because I'm here at Magfest, there's something very important I must do. There we go. Okay, there we go. A little bit of an audio issue there. Anyway, so with that priest's dying breath, he cursed us with something known as corpus disease, which is a pretty terrible disease currently plaguing Vardenfell, the island that we are on. And it's a pretty nasty disease. It slowly disfigures you and eventually kills you. And we have it now. Um, so we're just going to head to Vivek and then head to Molagmar and take care of the Arabenium Sumner of Arene. So the Arabians of Nerevarine, they're kind of warlike, and they don't really like the whole Nerevarine thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to kill all the warlike people, then we're going to name someone else's head of this tribe instead, and then they're going to name us Nerevarine instead. Okay. I am grabbing a few items from the people I am killing. We're going to need that. You gave me a high five. Nice. Sometimes he blocks. All right, so now we're going to talk to the wise woman of the camp, and she's going to tell me to do what I basically just did. Kill all those people and name someone else head instead. So the person we're going to name head of the tribe is in here. And I've gone way too far out of bounds. There we go. Now, he doesn't really want to be head of the tribe, so we have to yell at him a bunch and give him all the items that we stole, and then he's going to be like, all right, you're nervous now. Leave me alone. Go away. There's the door. Now that we've done that, we're going to try and get this corpus thing taken care of. 
See, there is a mage that Kai has found who may have a corporous cure. The problem is it hasn't been super successful and everyone he's given it to has died. But I mean, what do we really have to lose anyway? Because we have corpus too. This is Telfir. It is Maybe the worst good. area to navigate in the entire speedrun. Um, also not so great to navigate casually. You're going to see me going first and third person a whole bunch because these oh. doors in particular are pretty annoying to navigate. We are about to talk to Yagrim Bargarn, who is the last living dwarf. If any of you have played Skyrim, you actually know what a big deal it is that we're talking to a dwarf in this game. Now we're going to head back. What we grabbed from Yagrim Bargarn is a couple of boots that Devaith Fear want us to fetch. Now that we've gotten those, we can talk to him, take the potion, and what do you know, it works on us, the main character of all people. And it just so happens that being be able to be cured of Corpus is actually part of Nerve Ring Prophecy. This is Nello, or it was. Um, you can ignore that he's part of a Skyrim DMC DLC. He is canonically dead now. Rip Nello. This is Gothrin. Gothrin will never vote for us to be Horde to Tor. The game actually tells you you are supposed to kill him. So that's fine. This is a door that sometimes gives me trouble, and it's giving me trouble today. One annoying thing that can happen in some of these areas, come on, there we go. That can happen in some of these areas is if you fall out of bounds because your levitate runs out, you can actually soft lock. So do not want that to happen today. All right, so this is a slave in a cage. What we've just done is we've used our shoes of Instapass on her, and she is now the bride of the head of the Zineb tribe, who is right here. And so with that, they are now going to name us as Nerevarine of the Zineb tribe, and that's that taken care of. We are now going to head Why, back to Caius for one run. final quest. Mero Milo, who we met in the library earlier when we stole the book, she is actually in jail now. She is part of a faction known as the Distant Priests, who have an alternate account of the Nerevarine, and the temple, who is very much in charge around here, doesn't like that, and so they put her in jail. But first, we're going to take care of the Halalu Horse Tour quest. That is the head of House Halalu, or was, and he was actually allied with the Sixth House and their head, Dagoth Ur, and so he was never going to accept us, and so we had to kill him. Now that we've done that, all the other counselors are scared of us, and so they're going to name us Hortator, no problem. Whoa. In here is the head of House Redron, who you rem may remember ch uh, challenged us with the to death. I'm just going to pop him on the head, and he's down. Next, we're going to take care of more of House Lalu. In here is Jingling Half Troll. He wants us to give him a thousand gold, which is kind of a lot and takes a while, so we're just going to kill him. Next up, we have Halalu Counselor Drambero. All you have to do is find him. He's right over here. Let me tell you. We have another counselor. This is one of the easier ones to forget because she's kind of out of the way. Here she is. Now we're going to go break Maramila out of jail. Would it be a good time for some donations? Sure, you can, you can do some donations. We have three. Now. Uh, we have a donation from Josh and Christine for fifty dollars. Uh, running animation go brr. <laughs> uh, we have a donation. Uh, no text. Um, hopefully, I'm pronouncing this correct. Noise in Paris, twenty dollars. Thank you so much for the donation. And we have a donation from Thandrog for five dollars. Uh, donating from the audience. Magfest is my only opportunity to see a speedrunning marathon in person, and I appreciate the heck out of you guys for it. Tell Musical not to stop breaking his character's legs. <laughs> well, I'm glad we could show you a speed run. Anyway, this is Hole of Mine. It is the base of the Distant Priest. If I can get in the door, there we go. They're going to give me all the information Move about it. the alternate Tension account that I mentioned alternate. earlier. And now that we've done that, this, actually, this next part can actually be done in any order. I'm going to turn in the Tovani Horde Tour quest. You may remember we killed a whole bunch of the counselors. There is one surviving counselor, and we are going to go talk to her. She is a bit hard of hearing, though, um, so we'll see how this goes. I don't know where to begin. And yep, now she's ranting about spiders and eggs, um, but she has named us Hermidor of House Tavani, whatever that is. Next, we're going to turn in House Redoran. It turns out the new you head of House Redoran is actually that's the counselor whose son we saved Same earlier, up. so that's going to work out easy for us.
And then we have the final of the three great houses, House Lalu. The current head of House Lalu is a rather interesting character known as Crassius Curio. And you may have read With his pleasure. book because he's Please also a bit of ahead. a playwright, I Easy. guess. We do actually have to give him a little bit of a kiss, and then we are Hortator of House Lalu. We have now been named Nervereen of all four Ashliner tribes and Hortator of all three great houses, so now we can talk to the false god Vivek, who's going to tell us now the time has come to finally defeat the sixth house after a thousand years and get rid of their leader, Dagoth Ur. And now we have fulfilled all of the requirements of all main quests, so we can head SV. back to the center of the map that we parkoured around at the, ver bear at the very Walk beginning of the run, and, and take out Dagoth Ur and the sixth house and beat the game. That door sometimes gives me trouble not to do it. So time is going to come up. There's a heart in the center of this room. I hit it once with Thunder, five times with Keening. Not with the bow, though. Time is coming up, and time. Longer bed. Or weapon. So that was Morrowind All Main Quests, but I'm not done just yet because we actually had a bonus incentive to do the Any% percent run of Morrowind. You may remember early on that I said that we can jump to the end of the game and grab the two items we need to beat the game. We then veered off, did all of the plot stuff with Caius, Hortator, and Nerevarin, and then we came back and defeated Dagoth Ur. But you don't actually have to veer off and do all the plot stuff. You can just go straight to the end of the game after you get Sunnier and Keening. And so with that bonus incentive, we are going to do precisely that. Stand up. Here's Jeb again. I said we weren't going to see Jeb again. I guess that was incorrect. Yes, this game does allow special characters for its character names. So if we are all ready to go on a timer and everything else, that also starts when this dialogue box goes away. Off. Come with me. All right, um, if we do have a bonus 90% timer, you can start that timer in three, two, one. Guard skip again. Let's see if I got it. I got it. Okay, nice. Two in a row. Let's see if I can get hatch skip this time. Didn't get it. Oh well. Now character generation is a little bit different. I am still going to be a red guard because that mm -hmm. adrenaline rush ability is very useful. But I'm actually going to be picking a pre-made class instead of the custom I one I did. Because yeah, we don't need to worry about leveling up and release. all that speechcraft stuff and the training I did. So I can just pick a custom character class that allows me to get to Elder Saul, yes. and that's just fine. Ding you. Are you shall he really do this in the choice? Or there we go. Still picking the steed as my birth sign because going fast the is still good. Did you meant and what? Entry. Once again, we will be stealing a platter because that goal is very useful. Right. We're actually not going to be selling the ring this time. I'm going to keep it with me forever. Time. Continue through to the next building and talk to Celestradius. If you got any donations or anything to plug, you could probably do that now. Okay, no, no donations so far. But uh, just as a reminder, if you want any incentive to join, uh, to donate, uh, we are currently raising money for Child's Play. Uh, it's a great reason to uh, give some, uh, give a donation over. Uh, it's an organization that provides uh, consoles and other entertainment to children's hospitals around the world. Our currently our goal is five thousand dollars, and with the three most recent donations, we're sitting at. $3,508.63 out of our five thousand uh, dollar awesome. goal. So thank you very much. So get to see Tar Heel once again. Those scrolls, very useful. We'll not be grabbing your shoes this time. Don't need those. <laughs> and back to the end of the game. 
Now, one thing that can happen at the end of the game is that I can actually get stuck inside the Tower of Odorsal. Hopefully that won't happen this time. But it is a thing that can happen. And that was a scroll of Karian Flight. Let me see. Yeah, there we go. Sometimes this game also doesn't quite input all the way. That's another thing that can happen. So... Adrenaline rush equipped. There we go. Okay. We have made it. Can do the old Sunder Keening glitch again. Now, for the all main quest, I had to have my stats at certain numbers. For this one, those numbers don't actually matter. So I can get my stats all the way up to like 4,000 if I really want to. And I kind of do. So. Let's do a little more, just for fun. If I have my stats too high, then navigation actually becomes a lot more difficult and, like, gets out of control really easily. Anyway, Dagoth Femin is down. We get Sunder again. Now I'm actually going to head out to Aldrun because going to Aldrun and then coming back in is faster than trying to get out of Feminal. Feminal is a rather annoying dungeon to navigate. Ah, this door's going to be trouble this time. I have actually lost PBs to this door in particular. I almost got it. There we go. So now that we have uh, Sunder and Keening, we can just head straight to Dago Third. It's going to take me a little bit longer because they don't have Mark and Recall this time. What a f Oops. Ran out of How can you there. kill a god? And then it's toxic. What are you? Recast that. Let down. Right there. All right. It is not. Mercy. Time's Day coming up, and time. Of our, my old friend. Prophecy. Why have you? you now you may have heard this. It did take a little while in the heart chamber, but this can happen where you hear three audio files all at the same time. There. Rather fun thing that can happen with this game. Anyway, thank you all so much. Um, Thank, yeah, thank you for giving me the opportunity to run Morrowind here at MAGFAST. Um, if you happen to be around at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning, I will actually perfor be performing with the community orchestra down in the atrium. And I think a couple of people in the crowd will be performing with that too. So thank you all very much, and hopefully I'll see you all around.